Hello again, everybody. Um, once again, this is a uh, part of our Unit Five review. Um, this is going to deal with the, the second page of your Unit Five review. Um, I'm going to kind of work through some problems that are that are similar to the ones that you have to do on the review. Um, once again, this this review is not designed just to give you answers. It's kind of help you uh, work through the problems. So I'm going to work through problem types that are like the ones you're working on, but these will not be the problems. So you don't need to add these to your to your review. All right, now um, start with number seven. Number seven says. Rewrite the, the polynomial factors in the form x squared plus bx plus c. So in order to do so, we need, to, we need to FOIL. Now, if you remember, FOIL stands for first, outside, inside, last, or first, outer, inner, last, whichever way you like. Um, but it, it just reminds us how, what, what things you multiply together to expand the polynomial factor. So that first, you multiply the first number together. So 3x times 2x, which gives me 6x squared. Outer. 3x and the 5, so 3x times 5 is 15x. Okay. Now, inner. Inner is the negative 4 and the 2x, which gives me negative 8x. And last, the negative 4 and the 5, which gives me negative 20. Now, if you look, the blue lines come from involve the 3, the green lines involve the negative 4. So it kind of I drew this to kind of see that the that these ones involve the 3x being distributed onto both of them. And these ones involve the negative four being distributed out to both the other terms. So in order to in order to multiply these together successfully, every term has to be multiplied by every other term once. So now we can combine our like terms. Now there's nothing like the six x squared, so that's just going to drop down. There's nothing like the twenty, so that's just going to drop down. The two things that are like are the fifteen x and negative eight. Fifteen x minus eight x is seven x. So our answer is six x squared plus seven x minus twenty, and that'll be the the foiled version in ax squared plus bx plus c of this of these two polynomial factors. Right. The next thing, number eight, says factor or rewrite rewrite these as, as polynomial factors. So we're, there's three types of factoring. There's a there's factoring where we have ax squared plus bx plus c. There's common term factoring and there's special case factoring. We're, we're going to work through all three. Now, in factoring ax squared plus bx plus c, you got to find the factors of ax squared and the factors of c that add to 3. So our ax term is x squared and our c term is negative 10. The factors of, of x squared are x and x. The factors of negative 10 are negative 1 and 10, negative 10 and 1, negative 2 and 5, negative 5 and 2. Now since this is a negative 10, one factor has to be positive, one factor has to be negative. So keep that in mind. Um, <clears throat> so to find our factors, we've got to find the combination of x and x and the factors of negative 10 that add to 3. Now, I've done this problem before, so I know that they are going to be negative 2 and oops, 5. x times negative 2 is negative 2. x times 5 is 5. Add those together, you get 3x. So now I've found my combination. So to finish my factoring, I drop down my x's and cross over my other terms. So that is the factored version of x squared plus 3x minus 10. Now, this might take some time if you have to try multiple combinations, but eventually you get to the result. And if I wanted to check my answer, I could, I could foil this back out, and I should get the same thing. Right. Second type of factoring is common term factoring. This is useful when we only have two terms, okay, both of which having an x. I've got to find the common term that's in both. So I'm basically asking what number or what, what thing is in both these terms. Now, you may be able to, able to notice there's an x in both of those, so that means I can factor on x. There's also a 2 in both of these. Um, 10 is divisible by 2, and so is 8. So we can actually factor out a 2x. Now, 10 divided by 2 is 5. x squared divided by x is x. So the first term was 5x. 8x divided by 2x is just 4, because 8 divided by 2 is 2. x divided by x gets rid of the x's. So then we get 5x plus 4 times 2x. Now, if I was trying to find the solution, like, let's, let's say this was equal to 0, I'd have to go and set each of these factors equal to 0. But I don't in this case, because that's a factor. Last type of factoring is special case factoring. This is when I have a squared, x squared minus b squared, um, which then can be factored into ax minus b times ax plus b. If you remember, it's called the difference of squares. All right, something squared minus something squared. All right, now here's, here's, our, here's our example. 4x squared minus 9. 4 is something squared. That something is 2. And 9 is something squared. That something is 3. So I can find the solution to this, or find the, find the factors of this, by writing 2x minus 3, and 2x plus 3. Okay. Now you may, may come across a difference of squares where you don't have a number in front of the x. 
In that case, it's a one. Well, the, well, one, one is something squared. One is one squared, right? So instead of having these twos, I would just have x minus three and x plus three. Okay. So hopefully that, that clears that up a little bit for you. Right? Now the next the next part of the, the review is is nine through eleven. Now nine through eleven are pretty much all in the same way. You get everything to one side, solve by factoring using quadratic formula. Right now, remember the quadratic formula is x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four ac all over two left. All right, so there you go, two, two in an order name. Remember the only good use for an order name by its own. Um, but, but that's the quadratic formula um, that, that could be useful. You could actually use the quadratic formula every time you're doing 9 and 11. Um, I'm actually going to use factoring because I, I think factoring is, uh, is easier, but that's just the way I'm going to go with it. Um, so um, let's, let's, let's try an example. So, um, sorry about that. <clears throat> in number 9, okay, or one light number 9. They'll give you just a simple equation. Looks like this. Okay. I guess it's not so simple, but they'll give you an equation. Now, in this one, we just need to find our x value. So, in order to find my x values, I need to get everything to one side. That means I got to add to x squared plus 4x, 2 plus 2 is 4, equals 0. Now, if I was going to use a quadratic formula, um, the a, the a term, is whatever on my x squared. So, there's a 1 on my x. So, my a would be 1. b is whatever just on the x. So my b would be that 4, and c is whatever by itself, so my c would also be 4. All right. So then I'd plug these into this equation, so we'd get negative 4 plus or minus 4 squared, minus 4 times 1 times 4, all over 2 times 1. And that's, that's what we want to use the quadratic formula, but, but I'm not going to. Like I said before, I'm going to factor. So um, I can now factor this. I need to find the factors of x and the factors of 4 that add to 4. Um, I've done this one before. And the, the factors are x plus 2 and x plus 2. Now, now that I factor that, that doesn't mean I'm done. Okay. In order to finish this up, I need to set each of my factors equal to 0. Now, you, you've probably already noticed that I have two identical factors. So I don't need to set them both equal to 0. I can just set 1 equal to 0 because they're, they're both going to give me the same solution. So when I have two identical factors, that means I just have one solution. So x plus 2 equals 0. I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides. Oops. And we get x equals negative 2. That is my one solution. Now to make sure I'm right, I can take negative 2, plug it back into the, my original equation, and make sure that, that the left side equals the right side. Right. Now another type of problem you might get in between 9, 9 through 11 is where they give you two equations like this. They say y equals x squared plus 3x, and y equals negative 2x minus 4. Now if I were doing that, or if I were looking at doing a problem like this, I would start out by graphing. Sorry, you, sh you should always graph these to be sure just to make sure how many solutions you have. But this one is special because, because they don't just want you to find the x in this case. They also want you to find the y, the corresponding y to each x. So you um, may want to graph this one first. If you did, you'll see that, that it's a, a parabola intersecting a line. There's two intersections. One, is, or one is, on, uh, is where both x and y are negative. The other one is where x, x is negative and y is not. Um, but if you graph it, I think, you'll, I think you'll see that. So in order to do this, in order to, to find our solutions, we're going to take the two equations and set them equal to each other. Now, once I have the two equations equal to each other, we're going to take everything and get it over to one side. So I'm going to add 4 to both sides. And you might say, well, there's nothing like the 4. Well, since there's nothing like the 4, we just tack it on at the end. And I'm going to add 2x to both sides. And 2x gets added to 3x because it's the only thing it's like. So your x squared stays the same. 5x is a combination of 2 and 3, the 4 stays the same, and that equals 0. Okay. Now once again, I'm going to factor these, and we get x plus 1, x plus 4. Now here I have two different factors, so that means I'm going to have two solutions instead of just one like I had last time. And to find those two solutions, I set each factor equal to 0. Solving this one, we subtract 1 from both sides, get x equals negative 1. That means one solution occurs when x is negative 1. To solve this one, we subtract 4 from both sides. That means the other solution occurs when x is negative 4. So those are my two x values. Now, now I'm not done yet, because I need to find the corresponding y values. So to find the corresponding y values, I'm actually going to take these two x values and plug them in, plug them in at the top for, uh, for x. Now I'm going to give myself a little more room here. All right. 
So I'm going to take negative 1 and I'm going to plug it into either one of these two equations. It doesn't matter. All right, so let's do negative 1. So negative 2 times negative 1 minus 4. A little outside the window there. Well, so negative 2 times negative 1 is 2. 2 minus 4 equals negative 1. Oh, negative 2. Wow, long day. Equals negative 2. So that means one solution is negative 1, 2. Now the other solution, y equals negative 2 times negative 4 minus 4. Negative 2 times negative 4 is 8. 8 minus 4 is 4. So the other solution is negative 4, 4. So that's how I can find both the x's and y's for a problem like this. All right. Now the reason why I found both the x's and y's is because they gave me my equations. They might give you one like you saw before and ask you for the x and the y, ask you for the intersection points. Um, but the, these are the two points where the two graphs will, will intersect. All right. All right, now the last type problem you might see is one, is one more, like, more like one you'll see in 11. Now instead of giving us two equations like this one, they'll, they'll just have one equation set equal to each other again. Now a problem like this, you, you can get away with only finding x, but if you want to, you can find your y's as well. So we get 8 over x equals x plus 7. Okay, so in a problem like this, the first step is to get everything to one side. Okay, now, to get, in order to get everything to one side, I need to get this x off the bottom. So in order to do that, I need to multiply both sides by x. Okay. Oh, if, if you do graph this one, sorry, the 8 over x will make a butterfly, the x plus 7 will make a line, they'll intersect twice. So um, we're going to multiply both sides by x, those cancel out, so we just end up with 8, and then we multiply these, now I've seen a lot of students do a problem like this, and they'll write x squared plus 7, and then they'll move on from here, and since there's only one x, they'll think they can use algebra. Well, that's not the case. They forgot to multiply the x times the 7. Okay? When you multiply this, you've got to distribute onto both of them, not just one. So we get the x squared and the 7x. Now to solve this one, I'm going to need a factor, since I have two x terms, so we're going to subtract the 8 from both sides. We get x squared plus 7x minus 8. Since I have a negative 8, we're going to need negative factors. We're going to need one negative, one positive factor. And I've done this problem already. So I know my factors, they are x plus 8 and x minus 1. You might have to go through the process we talked about right there. All right. Now to find our solutions, we set each factor equal to 0. So 0 equals x minus 1. In order to solve that, we're going to add 1 to both sides. And we get 1 equals x, or x equals one. We solve when we have x plus eight, we subtract eight from both sides. So we get negative eight equals x. So then those are my two solutions. Uh, negative eight equals x and one equals x. Okay. So that's how I solve when I when I have a butterfly in a line. Okay, so those are all, all the problem types you might find in nine through eleven. Now the last one, the last problem on your review is number twelve. Number number twelve deals with logs. If you remember correctly, logs trying to figure out what power we need to raise the number we're logging, we're logging or what power of 10, we, what power on 10 we need in order to get the number we're logging. So, um, sorry, number 12. The first type of problem we might, we might see <clears throat> would be one where we have log of 25 equals x. Now in order to, in order to find this, okay, we just simply have to type in log 25 in our calculator. Log of 25 is 1.3979 equals x. Okay, so my solution there is just 1.379 equals x. Now, another type of problem you might see in number 12 is one where we have log of x equals negative 3. Now, this is, this is the problem I was talking about as I was erasing the board. All right, log figures out what power we raise 10 to in order to get our number. So Log of x equals negative 3, it's saying, I don't know what x was, but we, we had to raise 10 to the negative 3 power to get it. So in order to rewrite this one, right, in order to solve for x here, all we do is we need to raise negative 3 to be the power on 10. So my solution here is x equals 10 to the negative 3. Or we can think about the course that sum. Log base a of b, remember this is base 10, log base a of b equals c if a to the c equals b. All right, so that's their way of doing it. Now 10 to the negative third is 0 0.001. 0 0.001. So that's my solution.
Now, the last that probably might see in number 12 is one where we have our variable in the exponent. Okay. Now, the first thing we need to do in this problem is we need to get the 10, the 10 to, the, to the power of our variable by itself. Now, sometimes you might have like a plus 1 or minus 2 or whatever. You just got to use basic algebra to move it over. So with the plus 1, you subtract. With the minus 1, you add. But in this case, we have 3 times 10 to the x plus 1. So in order to get rid of the 3, we need to divide. So we have 10 to the x plus 1 equals 900 divided by 3 is 300. Now from here, I can use the power property of logs. I don't to remember. The power property of logs tells us if we have the log of 10 to the x, we can rewrite that as x log 10. So in order, to, in order to use that power property of logs, I need to log both sides here. So we're going to log 10 to the x plus 1. We're going to log 300. Now you probably can, cal can calculate the log of 300 with your calculator. Um, and if you do so, you end up with 2.4771. Right, that's log of 300. Now a power property of logs tells me I can rewrite this as x plus 1 times the log of 10. Now most of you probably know that the log of 10 is 1, so we can write x plus 1 equals 2.4771. So now to solve for x, we subtract 1 from both sides, and we get x equals 1.4771. So that is my solution. Now like any other, any other algebra problem, in order to check your answers, you can always plug x back into the original form and see if it equals 900. Same thing here, plug in, plug in 0 0.001 for x, you should get negative 3. Um, that one you just can calculate log 25. So hopefully this helps. Um, like I said, this isn't this isn't designed to give you answers. It's designed to help you work through the problems. So hopefully these help you work through the problems in your review and also do a good job preparing you for your test. Um, as always, if you if you have any questions, don't hesitate to come see me. Um, and good luck.